Nua Jahan, who was known as the light of the world, rose to become the most powerful woman in Mughal history. The Mughal Empire's treatment of its women has long intrigued historians. While it's true that the vast majority of the empire's notable figures were men, a few strong and independent female figures emerged. There were many influential women in the Mughal government, including Maham Begum, Babur's third wife and chief consort, Hamida Banu Begum, Akbar's foster mother and chief wit nurse, Mahamunga, the de facto regent of the Mughal Empire from 1560 to 1562, and Jahanara Begum, Shah Jahan's favorite daughter and Aurangzeb's sister. Nua Jahan, the most fascinating woman in Mughal history, was, however, incomparable. Nua Jahan was a woman of remarkable intelligence, strength, and beauty. She was the daughter of a noble Persian family and would go on to become the empress of the Mughal Empire. Nua Jahan was known for her military skills, political acumen, and remarkable aesthetic taste. She was a woman who defied the norms of her time and became a legend in her own right. Her exceptional leadership, fierce personality, and indomitable spirit set her apart from her contemporaries and earned her a place in history as one of the most remarkable women of her time. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Hallmark History. The fascinating world of the Mughal Empire, whose powerful rulers oversaw a vast and varied territory, is our focus today. In the midst of all this splendor and mystery, one woman stood out by breaking all the rules and forever changing the course of history. Her name was Nua Jahan, and her life was remarkable for its combination of grit, drive, and romance. Discover how this remarkable queen rose from her humble beginnings in Persia to become the most powerful woman in the Mughal court, along with the challenges she overcame and the legacy she left behind. The story of Nua Jahan, the empress who ruled the Mughal Empire with grace and determination, will take you to a world of timeless wonder. Let's go on this amazing adventure together, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Hallmark History channel for more videos like these. Numerous myths surround Nua Jahan's, originally known as Mer Unnissa, childhood and early life. She was born to Persian immigrants Mir Zagiyazbeg and Asmat Begum in Kandahar, Afghanistan, who had fled the declining Safavid Empire for the prosperity and safety of the Mughal Emperor Iraq Bar. According to reports, the family was robbed on the way to India. When the family finally settled in Kandahar, Asmat Begum gave birth to their second daughter. Due to their financial situation, the parents were worried about providing for their newborn. The story goes that her parents tried to leave her in the desert when they realized they had run out of food and water. Still, their grief was so great that they went back to get her. Surprisingly, she was found calmly perched next to a venomous snake. A convoy led by the merchant noble Malik Masood took them in during their long journey, and Masood would later help Giyazbeg find work in Emperor Akbar's service. This account seems a little too good to be true. She was assigned the moniker Mer Unnissa, which translates to son among women, because her parents hoped she would bring good luck to their household. Giyazbeg was able to find work in the Mughal Empire and rise quickly through the ranks, eventually becoming known as Adamadu Dalla, or Pillar of the State, for his shrewd leadership. As the family's fortunes improved, Mer Unnissa was able to receive the finest education possible, allowing her to become fluent in Arabic and Persian as well as art, literature, music, and dance. The Union of Jahangir and Nua Jahan 17-year-old in 1594, Nua Jahan married Ali Qiyasilu, an Iranian Mughal official. Also known as Shirafgan Khan. A daughter, Laidali Begum, was the only member of the family. Historians have placed Shir Afghan's death in 1607. The Mughal governor of Bengal was trying to have Shir Afghan arrested for his alleged role in a plot against Jahangir when the two men got into a fight, and Shir Afghan was killed. They say Jahangir plotted Shir Afghan's death because he had fallen in love with Nua Jahan but couldn't bring her into his harem. Whether or not this rumor is true is up for debate. Nua Jahan and her daughter fled to Agra after her husband's death where they were protected by Jahangir. In that capacity, she was a lady-in-waiting to Rukhaya Sultan Begum. Four years later, in 1611, Mehran Nissa and Jahangir were wed. Her new name, Nua Jahan, means light of the world, and it didn't take long for her to win over the emperor. 
The Mughal Emperor Jahangir had a problem with alcohol and opium and was generally uninterested in his administrative duties. Being the emperor's favorite wife gave Nua Jahan even more influence in the Mughal court. Due to her sway, both her father and brother, Asaf Khan, were promoted to prominent positions in the court system. The three formed a powerful alliance and began applying intense pressure on Jahangir. As the emperor remained in a trance, Nua Jahan easily rose to become the de facto ruler of the empire and the most influential figure in the court. To show his confidence in Nua Jahan, Jahangir bestowed upon her the imperial seal, the most potent symbol of the imperial decree's authority and determination, implying that Nua Jahan's assent was necessary before any document or order could be considered valid. She was also entrusted with the care of Mumtaz Mahal's second son, Prince Shah Shuja, and Shah Jahan himself, at the time Prince Karam. For further consolidation of her power within the Mughal Empire, Nua Jahan had her daughter Laidali wed to Sharyar, Jahangir's youngest son. By doing so, Nua Jahan's descendants ensured that their influence over the Mughal Empire would be felt for at least another generation. Nua Jahan was the de facto ruler of the empire because Jahangir favored intoxicants and diversion over all else. As her influence grew, she began minting coins in her own name and issuing royal decrees, acts that are traditionally reserved for monarchs, not their wives. Nua Jahan protected the borders of the empire after her husband's death on October 28, 1627, and she also dealt with family strife, rebel uprisings, and a war of succession caused by Jahangir's failure to name an heir. It is commonly known that Nua Jahan once prevented the death of her husband. There is a well-known story about how Nua Jahan once saved her husband's life. While traveling to Kashmir in 1626, Jahangir was taken prisoner by rebels, led by Mahabad Khan, who planned to overthrow the emperor. After learning of the threat, Nua Jahan took action to have her husband released. She commanded one of the units while riding atop a war elephant and ordered an attack on the adversary. Nua Jahan's mount suffered damage during the conflict. She gave herself up to Mahabad Khan and was taken prisoner along with her husband. Unfortunately for the rebels, Mahabad Khan was unaware of Nua Jahan's intelligence and creativity, which allowed her to quickly plan an escape and raise an army right in front of him. On October 28, 1627, not long after being saved, Jahangir passed away. It did not amuse foreigners to see Nua Jahan wielding so much power. Peter Mundy, a British businessman, and Francisco Pelsart, an officer of the Dutch East India Company, both spoke out against Nua Jahan and her authority. In his role as the first official English ambassador to the Mughal Empire, Sir Thomas Rowe was extremely critical of Nua Jahan. He complained about Jahangir's ability to rule and about the barbarous nature of the locals, who he said didn't accept Christianity. Despite opposition from courtiers and imperial officials who did not share Jahangir's view of a woman assuming such great power, Jahangir's love for Nua Jahan remained unwavering. Jahangir frequently wrote loving entries about his wife in his journals. Nua Jahan was famous for her bravery when hunting tigers alongside her husband. It is said that she used only six bullets to take down four tigers in a single hunt. To shoot a gun from the back of an elephant without missing is a very difficult task, the journal writes of Jahangir's hunting prowess. When the elephant detected the lion, it became restless. She got a clean shot off on it, and it eventually died from the wound. After Jahangir's death, the Mughal Empire fought a war of succession. There was already a lot of tension between Nua Jahan and Prince Kurum because Nua Jahan had plotted several times to stop Kurum from becoming emperor. Kurum declared himself the Mughal Emperor and took the name Shah Jahan. Prince Sharyar enjoyed her husband Nua Jahan's support. Jahangir's eldest son, Khusro, led a rebellion against the emperor, was partially blinded as a result, and was eventually killed by Prince Kurum in a Deccan uprising. Jahangir's second son, Parviz, had an alcohol problem. Sharyar and Nua Jahan were ahead in the succession war at the beginning. Asaf Khan sided with Shah Jahan, changing the outcome of the conflict because he is the brother of Nua Jahan and the biological father of Mumtaz Mahal. While Asaf Khan imprisoned Nua Jahan, Shah Jahan overcame Shah Yar's forces and had him executed. In 1628, Shah Jahan became Akbar's successor as the Mughal Emperor. 
Nua Jahan was assassinated just before she completed her father's tomb in Agra. The tomb was likely the inspiration for the architectural masterpiece that is the Taj Mahal. First, of its kind, this Mughal tomb was constructed entirely of white marble. Construction on the structure began in 1622 and was completed in 1628. A house arrest sentence confined Nua Jahan to a small apartment in Lahore with her young widowed daughter Laidali Begum and granddaughter for the rest of her life. There were no frills to their lives, the three of them lived simply. Shah Jahan who became the builder of Tamahal for his wife Mumtaz Mahal provided her with a yearly stipend of 2 million rupees, about $45,000. She was in charge of seeing that her father's tomb in Agra was finished at the time. The tomb was likely the inspiration for the architectural masterpiece that is the Taj Mahal. First, of its kind, this Mughal tomb was constructed entirely of white marble. Its construction commenced in 1622 and was completed in 1628. On December 17, 1645, at the age of 68, Nua Jahan left this world. A tomb she had built was where she was buried in Lahore, in the Shah Darabag. This poor stranger deserves neither a lamp nor a rose, as it reads on her tombstone. Let not a butterfly or nightingale perish. Our time spent learning about Nua Jahan's life has hopefully left you feeling awed and amazed by the extraordinary person she was. She rose to prominence as one of history's most powerful figures thanks to her dog determination and extraordinary accomplishments and her legacy lives on to this day. She broke new ground for women in politics and the arts by rejecting traditional roles and challenging established norms. Let us never forget that her life serves as an example of the value of tenacity, fortitude, and resolve. We appreciate you coming along on our trip through time and hope to have you back on the Hallmark History Channel soon.